Welcome everyone. Hi. My name is Claire Farley. I'm the director of the Office of Transgender Initiatives and I'm so proud to work for a mayor that supports LGBT initiatives in the city of San Francisco. Today, San Francisco is launching Open to All, a national campaign to build understanding and discussion about the importance of protecting all people from discrimination. As the federal administration continues to attack our diverse communities, it's important that we stand by our values of being open for all and call on other cities to follow suit. San Francisco is a beacon of hope for the rest of the country with some of the strongest policies and programs here in San Francisco. We make sure that until the work is done, until all of our communities are safe, we continue to do the great work because what happens in San Francisco happens in the rest of the country. So as we go through our daily lives, from going to the gym or going to the school or hanging out with friends, no one should have to worry about being discriminated because of who they love, because of their race, ethnicity, gender identity, expression, disabilities, or religious beliefs. But sadly, our president continues to divide us. But in San Francisco, we will continue to share the love. So here in San Francisco, our diverse communities and our small businesses are the road, road uh, bedrock of our cities. There we go. Um, and despite all of these biased attacks, San Francisco will continue to open our doors to all. So today, as we know, we are on the eve of the Equality Act being introduced in the Senate and the House. Now more than ever, we need protections. And like I said, what happens in San Francisco happens throughout the country. So now it's my honor to introduce a champion for LGBT rights and diversity for all, our mayor, London Breed. Thank you, Claire. It is really great to be here with so many incredible leaders to really launch something that we shouldn't have to launch. You would think after what happened, especially with the history of our country during the Civil Rights Movement, where African Americans were discriminated against, Asian Americans were discriminated against, and so many folks were not welcome to do something as simple as eat at a lunch counter. You would think that in 2019, anyone would be able to go any place that is a public business and be able to get just a basic service that they request. And we know that is windy out here. <laughs> and this campaign, shoot, my hair and my eyes. Um, this campaign stemmed from two, stemmed from uh, two men who wanted a wedding cake who wanted to share their love and on the day that was supposed to be one of the best days of their lives, picking out a wedding cake, it turned into just really a, a very cha serious challenge with being refused that basic option. Here in San Francisco, we know that we won't tolerate that kind of behavior in anyone who owns a business. If your business is open and available and you're a public business, then you're, you, you either are open to all or you should find another city to do business in because we won't tolerate that here in San Francisco. You know, we still have, as we know, a number of challenges, including, sadly, people, two African Americans who were arrested in a Starbucks. We all remember that. We remember the gay couple who was put out of a ride share. Uh, we remember some of the situations that continue to occur all over this country. And today, now more than ever, we need to come together. We need to continue to push and support good business practices because we know that throughout the United States, there are still over half of the cities in this country still discriminate against our LGBT community. We won't do business with those states. We won't tolerate discrimination. And here in San Francisco, we will continue to be open to all. 
So as we launch this incredible campaign that signifies all our great values and what we stand for, we acknowledge so many incredible people who have made this possible. I first want to acknowledge uh, Molly, who's with the Movement Advancement Project for spearheading this campaign to advance the conversation, the policy work, and collaborations on this subject all over the world. The Haas Jr. Fund, who funded this campaign. We're going to encourage people to put up these signs. We're going to encourage people to open up their businesses and bring awareness to this very challenging issue. I want to thank, thank you. I want to thank, uh, the wind is blowing in my eye. I'm sorry, I can't even see. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, at this time, Molly, I want to ask you to come up so I can present this proclamation to you, thanking you for your commitment and your work. Oh, buried back there. <laughs> And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Supervisor Raphael Mandelman for some remarks. He represents this amazing district, um, and I'm just always happy to be here. Um, I see all of the incredible businesses and the merchants, and you know this is a beautiful community, and the sun is shining, so we're going to have a good time today. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Thank you for, um, for your commitment to this community and this neighborhood, the best neighborhood in the world. The yeah. <laughs> One of the places where the LGBT civil rights movement began just two blocks down at Harvey Milk's camera shop. Um, this is a very appropriate place, of course, to be doing this. Uh, for people in search of acceptance, refuge, or opportunity, San Francisco has long provided a safe place to be who you are from young queers fleeing violence and intolerance in search of a community that embraces them, to families who immigrate here to create a better life, San Francisco welcomes and celebrates our diversity. Unfortunately, as the mayor uh, noted, in more than half the country, discrimination is still protected under the law. Only 20 states provide full legal protection from discrimination in employment, housing, and public accommodations on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Hate-fueled attacks are also on the rise, with the FBA, F FBI reporting a 17% increase in hate crimes in 2018. Even right here in the Castro, we continue to see homophobic and sometimes violent attacks on members of our community. And as we in San Francisco resist a president who works to divide the nation, it is more important than ever that we lead by example in the fight against hate. By becoming the first city to join the National Open to All campaign, we can send a strong message that hate will not be tolerated here. To date, Open to All has the support of 200 national and state organizations committed to civil rights, racial justice, LGBT equality, health equity, and disability rights. Today, the Board of Supervisors is considering the, uh, the resolution that, my, that the mayor and I are putting forward to declare San Francisco open to all, an open to all city. I'm hopeful that with their support, we will soon be adding our name to the Open to All campaign, like this afternoon. Um, I want to thank Claire Farley at the Office of Transgender Initiatives, Marianne Thompson at OEWD, who is hiding behind the sign but is amazing. Regi not to say that any of the other fine public servants up here are not amazing, but Marianne is amazing. Yay. Regina Dick Andrizi at the Office of Small Business, thank you. Tom Temprano, also amazing in my office and an elected official in his own right on the Community College Board. Um, I know we have uh, we have uh, many it's a number of elect elected queer and non queer elected officials here, but I'm super excited that we have my predecessor as District Eight Supervisor and the current Bart Board President Bevan Defty is here. Thank you, Bevan. Um, I'm going to introduce some more of our electeds in a second, but I want to thank Daniel Bergerac and Castro Merchants Association for your great help in kicking off this campaign, and of course the staff of Open to All. Um, and with that, um, I will be introducing our next speakers, two of these amazing public servants. We are so lucky that the people taking care of our, collecting and taking care of our money and figuring out how much we have to pay each year um, are so talented and, uh, and, and wonderful. Um, we have our treasurer, Jose Cisneros, and our assessor, Carmen Chu. Please come on up.
Hello, everyone. I'm Jose Cisneros, San Francisco Treasurer. I'm honored to stand here with our county assessor, Carmen Chu. Um, we, both of our offices, work very hard to not only provide funding and, and the vital uh, uh, um, in, income of cash to the city to make its, its work possible, but between our offices, we actually support hundreds of thousands plus businesses in this city every year. And we do that no matter what kind of businesses they are. Entrepreneurs come to us and set up their businesses, open their properties, uh, begin to become successes here in San Francisco, and we step up and make sure that they can be a success right here in, in San Francisco. I'm proud of the work we do in our office, and I stand behind the Open to All program. Good morning, everybody. I think Jose and I love getting up together because we're like peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> a money sandwich partnership over here. Uh, but we're all really happy to be here to support the Open for All campaign. Um, you know, for my background, my parents used to have a small business, and my parents were immigrants to the United States many, many years ago, and they too faced discrimination. You never knew sometimes when you walk in the door, if you couldn't speak English, what kind of service you would get. And I think it connects us all, this feeling of not knowing for certain. And I think a campaign like this is so important because when you see that sign on a window, when you see that sign on a door front, you know that people in that store recognize the importance of diversity and the importance of inclusion. And I couldn't be more proud of San Francisco for being, I believe, the first city to be doing this. So congratulations to Molly, to Claire, and to everybody who's been part of this wonderful project. We're really happy to be part of it. And speaking of all those incredible businesses here in San Francisco that are opening their doors to everybody in our community, I'd now like to introduce Linda Tomoko Mahara, who's the uh, founder of Paper Tree right here in Japantown. Linda? Thank you. Um, thank you, Mayor Breed, for being our hometown girl made good. <laughs> the mayor of our amazing city. She grew up around Japantown, um, and that's where our family business is. So my name is Linda Mihara. I am the uh, part owner and manager of Paper Tree in San Francisco's Japantown. Uh, the business was started in 1968. Uh, by my father and my mother, who are actually here today, Nov Mihara and Shiz Mihara. We have recently become a San Francisco legacy business. We're very proud to be that. Uh, to be a legacy business, you have to be in business at least 35 years. And now we are entering our 51st year in business, and we're happy to do so. San Thank you. San Francisco is an amazing city. We are a world-class city. We have always been the example of how being, you know, no matter what your background is, your religion, your sexual orientation, everybody has been welcome. And we make it work here in the city. We are a world-class city because of our world-class people. And I think one of the key things that makes San Francisco so unique, not only are the people, but are the different neighborhoods. So we have our little identities, but we still get together and we mingle and we you know, respect each other, we work together and we open our doors to the world. And as a business, having your business in San Francisco, you know, we've always run our paper tree as open to all. You know, our family goes back 100 years. Um, through those 100 years, we've experienced, um, uh, you know, establishing life here in the States. Um, we've experienced uh, internment <clears throat> during the war. My dad was actually uh, interned at Heart Mountain, Wyoming. And there are no, a lot of different levels of discrimination. All, you know, that's the, the internment was just, is just one example. Of course, there are those that um, discriminate based on who they see in front of them. And I think that that's really wrong. I think if you um, have had, everyone's had, I think, some experience um, of some type of discrimination. And I think, for our family, having lived through that, also a step, coming back to reestablish a, a business in San Francisco, San Francisco's Japantown has been a great, you know, we kind of live by example. You open your doors to the world and it's amazing what you see. You know, growing up in the business, I had a front row seat to all those that came to San Francisco because 
San Francisco is such a great city. You know, we, of course, we have those beautiful, um, you know, landmarks. We've got uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, Coit Tower, all those. But it's getting into the neighborhoods and getting to meet the people is really what makes San Francisco unique. I think having us be the first city to jump on board with the Open to All campaign kind of reminds everybody to, yes, as, your, as a business owner, you need to be open to all. Absolutely. There's no room for discrimination. There's no room for any of that negativity. We are, as business owners, examples of how it can work and respecting everybody that walks through the door and everyone that comes to visit this wonderful city. Uh, we are the first, we pledged already, open to all. So all of the business owners that are here today, I definitely encourage you to think in the same way. Go ahead and register and let's continue to make San Francisco the living example of how it should be. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So are we ready to be open to all? Yes. yes. So as you can see, we've had our electeds already sign this. The mayor has signed the pledge as well. And as she said, we will not allow businesses in our city that are not open for all because everyone deserves fairness and equality. So just to remind us of our call to action here, we're asking other cities to join San Francisco's lead um, of becoming open to all cities across the country. We're asking you to reach out to your favorite businesses and ask them to join this pledge because where we shop and where we spend money, we want to make sure that that is our San Francisco values. And finally, please ask your elected leaders. So many of them have already signed the pledge, but we're asking leaders to join us today. So with that, thank you all and welcome to Open for All Day.